So hello and welcome. We are here for another beautiful podcast, Heart Dialogue, Vital Signs and Voices for New Earth. And yeah, I feel so blessed in my heart to have with me today, my dear friend, Pat, Pat Amstrad. Hello. <laughs> hello. We have a long time together, not together so much in a physical space, but over the years and over the distance, we have maintained this beautiful friendship. And I always honor you for your extraordinary view on, on everything, on for the way you express art and beauty through language, through paintings, through art, and to friendship. Mm. So I'm very happy to welcome you today, Pat. Maybe you want to say a little bit about yourself and what brings you here today. Well, it, it, it's interesting. I've had um, a, a little sequence of events in the last less than a week. I um, had a dream Saturday night that I was giving a presentation the next day, which I was. And I knew there was going to be about 15 people there, but about 70 turned up in the dream. Um, they caused chaos. I, I recognised some of these people for various players in my life who disrupted, overturned, um, created havoc in one way or another. Um, and then towards the very end, it fell into place. Um, and they eventually left, and the original 15 came back into a setting. Well, the next day I go to the speaking engagement. Um, I ha only had entered the property. It was like a garden party event, and I fell flat on my face. I fell on a new hat which protected my face, but I nearly put my teeth through my bottom lip. And I just really got the, the largesse of the message. Now, it didn't all come together immediately, but by Monday, Tuesday, I just got, I can actually wipe clean all of those inter people who ran interference, mm -hmm. um, disrupted in one way or another. Um, the, you know, there's the manifestation, afraid I'll fall flat on my face and won't succeed. So wish fulfilled, <laughs> you know, <laughs> which is my command, boom. Um, and someone, um, someone arrived to, to minister to me and the, I just got the very unique thing that that was too. That it was her who would who you know came and um way over time no one wanted to go home it was just amazing I was even in the uh it's like an abstract painting even in the splash on the wall it's like oh well will you look at that <laughs> <laughs> there's some there's some beauty here, but it's not it's not always apparent um, until we're the ones who make meaning. So you know the I think the last joyology is now twenty one, and um, I I have experienced so many stories, which has been a large part now of my storytelling gambit. Um, but also the capacity to demonstrate how paradox and synchronicity can be side by side, challenge and support can be side by side, how presence and being in intention informs that at a very deep level. Yes. And I think the therein lies the wonder of my life, that um, out of the chaos at the turn of the century has has sprung this this multi you know I was already very creative 
but it uh, unleashed it and I'm I'm astounded how quickly sometimes. Yes. And that that really that really says so much about you and how I know you and how you are able to see the beauty and the joy in any situation and how you and this always fascinates me and possibly that's where we have a lot in common. We're reading the signs beyond the scene. You know, and we're not getting stopped by some funny occurrences. Yeah. It's the opposite. <laughs> we we continue reading the signs beyond. And so I feel it's beautiful that we are here today together to have this heart dialogue. And, and you're such a woman from the heart, your stories, your life, the joyology. This is all heart stuff. <laughs> And so it's really beautiful for me to talk with you about the vital signs in our lives and how we can turn them into blessings and into beauty and become that vital voice of a new earth. Yes. So absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. So we came today to a very interesting idea. Our dialogue in regards to those vital signs and voices is actually unity consciousness mm -hmm. and we got inspired with Ceci's painting at the back and the word that you gave me was unity consciousness and it's just a fascinating topic consciousness in general is something that everybody talks about and for many consciousness whether it's unconscious, conscious, or superconscious, only exists in the mind. But really, uni unity consciousness is much more than that. So, Pat, would you love to share with us the painting that you have created and that is at the back of your door? Yes. <laughs> I painted during the lockdowns um, in the last couple of years, I painted three pieces and the piece I'm going to share uh, was the third. So the first was create um, an image that I called entanglement and it was an interpretation of what that was about. Once I created that and then saw it, it was like, oh, my goodness, this is how everyone is. Then I painted the next piece, which was 17 layers just rich primary colours and I've had so much wonderful feedback about that piece and that piece then allowed me to paint the next piece which was um, it's a stylized figure of a head um, they're arranged in jigsaw pieces with four or five heads at the bottom coming in getting tighter and tighter four three two until at the top there's just the two faces and they're melded and actually kissing. Um, and it's um, the marks where the jigsaw fits to together is highlighted very dark. And I did that on purpose because I wanted to show how sometimes putting the pieces together um, can be very obvious right? It, it's very delineated. But when you look at the whole picture, it's not. Yes. So, um, and then when that was finished, I didn't have like a an, uh, an end idea of what it would be called. But when it was finished, I thought, yes, that's, for me, that's unity consciousness. And I have an easel that was given to me by um, a, a friend back in New Zealand. It's in between my lounge and dining area and it faces the front door and it's a it's an invitation it's a welcome it's a welcome sign it's the first thing people see when they walk in um it's quite big so it, it's it's larger than life and it's not normally what you find in the in in that area and the you know the the intention was in the face of all of that turmoil the last two or three years, mm -hmm. um, I wanted to be 
Um, well, on one level, I want to be inviting it all, but certainly not the violence and those things that were happening, but that everyone who, were, who would come would have a story of how this last two or three years has been and that we might unite um, in our sharing around that. So even though every story is different, um, there's something in that. And something that came up just now that when back in 2004, when I was going to tour with Patch Adams, I woke up one morning, um, this is after my partner had left, and I'd lost all the pigment out of my skin mm -hmm. and my hands had gone white. I had a butterfly shape on my chest that had gone white and I'd gone white from my toes to my knees. So I get up in the morning, look in the mirror and think, oh, my goodness. First thing I think of is Patch Adams and the movie because this is his butterfly yes. on the chest. And when his girlfriend is shot, he goes with a battered old briefcase and looks out over where he's going to build Gesundheit, puts the briefcase down, and this is true, a monarch butterfly lands on the briefcase, then comes up and lands on his chest. Mm -hmm. So it was only some weeks after that thought <laughs> in front yes. of the mirror that um, uh, I finally found Patch's phone number and rang him. And the all, all of those interludes before then led me to that, uh, which led me to tour with him. And I just, there was... There was a lady, I did a pilot in a rest home, and there was one of the daughters of one of the elderly women. She used to call me Patch Adamstead, right? <laughs> um, so there were all these indicators yes. leading me to that tour with Patch, leading yeah. me, like I returned from that tour feeling more vital and alive than I'd ever felt in my whole life. And it was because I'd experienced it all. Yes. Right. And, um, you know, there, there were, you know, such tragic circumstances. One and a half million children live in these incredible um, facilities and no toilet paper, no hand towel, no light bulbs, no soap. Um no things on their bedside, nothing, mm -hmm. nothing, mm -hmm. no, no gift or toy or, um, and the, the enormity of what we did doesn't, doesn't escape me to this day, Do you know, okay. 36 people in clown for sauna, I get out of the bus and in we go and we, we bring joy where it appears there's none. Mm -hmm. and he visits those same facilities and well people children stay there till they're 16 and he's been going back to the same places and each year they wait and they draw pictures and draw pictures that we might each have a picture wow so you know the all, all of those encounters, those children, all of my encounters with all the other compassionate clowns, we were called, yes. um, I never did learn to juggle. <laughs> um, but it wasn't about that. No. Patch said no. to me, don't come because of me. Come because you want to find and spend your clown self. Come because you want to make at least one Russian friend. Yes. Come because you want to experience the disparity between rich and poor. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. and so yeah isn't that just beautiful how how blessed we are with experiences like that the encounters and the wonders uh, and, and the signs that are beyond the disparity beyond the incredible poverty beyond the incredible nothing nothing and yet there is a wonder and that yet there is a magic 
and you were able to share that in that clown that you choose to slip into and, and bring joy. And for me, this is again, another way of bringing unity consciousness. It doesn't matter where you take it. And it always is related to joy. It's related to bliss. If you can bring smile on people's faces, you change the world. And I feel sometimes we, we forget what we can really do. We forget what our voice can bring into the world our smile, yeah. our joy, our presence. And I'm so blessed that you were able to share with us these profound, extraordinary experiences with Patch that made such a difference and, yes. and created such a consciousness of unity, of being one and together, regardless of circumstances life conditions age whatever yep. and how these encounters back in 2004 have been with you and coming through you in so many different cases mm. there's, there's, been hardly, able to, yeah. <laughs> there's hardly a day passes where I don't have occasion to share one of the stories. Yes. From that tour. Yeah. Because I know I know uh, how much it will touch, move, and inspire. One one little girl in the Deaf, Dumb, and Blind Institute. Um, when I walked in, she held out her hand, took my hand in her hand, took me into a separate room, sat me down on the floor and started playing with my earrings. I was filled at that point. I had no idea what was happening, no idea of any condition she might have. I was just filled with awe and wonder that something was about to happen. And I don't know how seconds passed and I'm waiting, waiting. And then she started to hum, still holding my earrings. And as she hummed, I thought, oh, you're deaf. I could tell by the tonal quality mm -hmm. in her voice she was deaf. And so she hummed for a time and then she stopped. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, it's my turn. So she hummed and I hummed for the next 45 minutes till they called me to get on the bus. And in that 45 minutes, I did not have a single stray thought. I didn't think, oh, I wonder what I'm doing when I go home. Her and I, and it's the most um, extended experience of presence that I've ever had. There was no language, only the reverb of that sound. And, you know, she was making it up and so was I. It was just... What a was... beautiful experience of presence, but also that unity again, that consciousness. And presence is consciousness, is, is living consciousness at the end of the day. And how mm. you and her just could come and, and fall into this consciousness together that is, is bigger than you and beyond you and all of that. And of course, for me, it, it touches my heart that it was through sound. Yes. And she will have not forgotten this and neither have you. And every time you share that, you're sharing another piece of connectedness, of consciousness, of presence, of the wonder of life yep. that is in sound. It's incredible. Yes. How, how beautiful, because it's so hard. Even if, if I'm living here and, you know, you're trying to be so conscious and present all the time, but how easy is it to think about, oh, what are we doing tomorrow? Who is the client? What are we recording? It's so 
it's so easy to get distracted and get out of that precious presence. And for me, the magic is that you could tell that story and more people could be part. And so you are spreading that spark and you become that voice for this amazing unity consciousness that happened between her and you. But really, it happened everywhere because energy doesn't stay confined between two people. Mm. It ripples out like the waves on the ocean and yeah. the sound beautiful yeah so, i still talk monthly to oh, perhaps 10 or 12 from that tour other others have faded away over time yeah. uh, for many years we did talk all the time um I called them all together for a prayer vigil for a niece of mine who had um, born with two um, two dead areas in her brain. Uh, we did this five-day prayer vigil and she woke up. <laughs> um, so, you know, but did we do that? I like to think we did. Um, and the... Yeah, you know, understanding the the power be the power behind commitment. You know, I made a request, they agreed, and we came together every day. I think it was for about half an hour, um, and we just went through prayers. We just made made them up, um, and and there she was. You know, she's she's living still and she's not without some problems. Um, however, she's changed the face of consciousness in her family and opened them up to a level of compassion they certainly were not exhibiting beforehand. <laughs> yes, so oh, beautiful. Yeah, isn't it amazing when we are getting together in unity and truly sharing consciousness? in prayer, in meditation, in, in just presence and sound, we are actually shifting the physical circumstances. Yes. Because that is a physical thing that in a way was present with her and that could shift because of that dedication and commitment to be together, to share that presence, that precious consciousness of being together and i feel this is what is rippling out now into this new earth that we're all co-creating together and listening to you again fascinates me all the time you and many of us have started co-creating this new world long time before anybody talk about it yes <laughs> And isn't that beautiful? In our unconsciousness, we have been so conscious. Yes. And I think for me it began, I don't know if you know Daring Donna. Of course I know Daring Donna. I used yes, to I used to do raw dishes with her at uh, Wise Cicada in Auckland. And I went Wonderful. to the Mana yes, yes, Festival yes. and all of that. Yes, I know yes, Daring Donna. Yes. So she held New Zealand's first be the change conference back yeah. in the year 2000 uh -huh. she invited 17 speakers 300 people turned up for the event a dawn ceremony to open up and there was no schedule for the day there was no agenda and a lot of people couldn't be with that so they left um but over the day I was one of the speakers and I just spoke continuously all day to small groups um we we Banded, you know, just with just this fluid movement. Um, no, nothing needed to be done. Uh, it's my first experience of, of working in that fashion. And th there were some physicists there who had been mapping out three points in New Zealand and they showed an illustration of what the energy grid looked like 
when they first began mapping. So it was a yes. fairly simple illustration, uh, not many tiers, uh, not many sides, if you like. And then the mapping they had done just before this event was just like a multifaceted diamond shape in terms of energy balls from those three points. Um, and the, you know, I really get that event for myself and for so many others was like, uh, was like a permission note for all of the healers in New Zealand to step out. Yes. Uh, time to grab your courage and, um, you know, live into your practice and extol your practice, you know, to really get it out there um, in a magnificent way. And she didn't say we could do that, but that it was all implied, right? There was just freedom and a, a silent a silent visual yeah. of how to do it. It was there on the day. Not, not said. Yeah, but not but all it, needs it, to be said. Yeah. How beautiful and, and and you know this is so funny now because I got to New Zealand in 2000 right. and I understood later that it was the energy and the Waitaha, the original people of of of, uh, of New Zealand as we understand that they called me because I feel partially it was people like Daring Donna who called the the healers the the new earth people all together to remember who they truly are and to start developing that diamond and to go out into the world. Now, I met her much later. My whole raw life and plant-based living started with her. She invited me on a challenge to go plant-based and raw, and I stayed on it mostly. I eat a little bit of cook now, but um, basically she, she initiated that. And I want to I want to share a story because it reminds me. So back in 2000, she has this conference and there's no schedule. So I ended up being on a cooking team, raw plant based, of course, at Mana Festival in the Coromandels. And we were a team of I don't remember how many, 10 people possibly cooking and very beautiful people there. Ann Curtis, Silky Fuchs, all kind of really amazing people. And anyway, so uh, Daring Donna said, well, who is going to take the morning shift and who is going to take the evening shift? And I said, but we are so attuned. The ones who need to turn up will turn up. And she said, yes, this is what we're going to do. So can you imagine? I mean, you know, you have a stand at a festival. So, I mean, you are needing to serve food at a certain time. She agreed we didn't have a schedule and there was enough people in the morning. There was enough people for the night and it was just flying. So I appreciate that you give me that other point of daring Donna and my experience that I was privileged to have. Now, this just shows to me again, and my experience with her possibly goes back to 2009, 2010. Mm -hmm. So we're talking quite a little bit of time later. And for me, it's just so beautiful how we have all prepared. And New Zealand was one of the most important places mm -hmm. to allow that shift that started in 2012. And of course, now we're halfway through that empty time. And we're starting to understand actually the true signs, the true messages that were given to us and how we are linked together, Pat, and we didn't even know. Yeah. yeah. And this brings me to the last kind of beautiful theme I want to explore with you today. We And we have spoken about it and I just find it so beautiful as you have placed and if you have created this painting of the people coming together and in a way inviting them into your home to share, you also went out and said, I want to set the table. I want to bring back the wonder and the magic. And for me, these are also vital sense that the loss of ceremony and ritual 
outside of a congregation, outside of whatever, but that ritual and ceremony in a home and that sense of wonder. Can you share with us what, what you have done and what you are possibly still doing? Yes. Uh, I'm single and I would dearly love um, a partner in my life. And one of the triggers was Stephen Jenkinson uh, in one of his, in his first movie, Grief Walker. He's talking to someone who is preparing, a lady who's preparing to pass. And he's saying to her, how you set the table now will govern how those you leave behind will eat. Wow. And I've never forgotten it. Mm -hmm. Every time I've done a workshop or a presentation, I intentionally set my table with whatever props I, I desire to put on it. And the I place in front of people's eyes what the visual that I most want to impart. So so that's informed, uh, and it's only recently that this has happened. Um, it's like, well, I actually should be doing that too. So I I don't have a tablecloth and all of the fineries for tea and things, but I have these beautiful, um, quite spiritual placemats. And so I just sit for two, two places. Um, jug of water in the middle and two glasses and and I just sit in that you know on one level I could look and bemoan there's the empty space <laughs> um but it there's something really quite playful about that and the you know I I know my energy attracts so it's like Without pushing or forcing, how can I how can I be the invitee? Uh, and it doesn't happen has to doesn't have to happen that it actually comes through my door. It can be happen somewhere else. I'm yes. just setting the scene here for for you know, and it's not just a partner that I desire. There's oh. there's there's others that you know that I want to invite into my life. So. Um, so that came from Stephen Jenkinson, if people want to have a look at his movie Grief Walker. Um, uh, such a such a, an incredible video of wisdom, just such I, ancient I can wisdom. feel it already, yes. Yeah. On, on his farm in Canada, uh, in the wilds, he, um, if he goes and takes from the earth, if he takes an animal, that they might eat, um, or crops he grows grows things. Um, then he has a pouch, not unlike pouches that I've seen you have, um, uh -huh. that has you know feathers and symbols, stones, pebbles, um, all manner of things, little bits of fur, uh, and wherever he takes from the land, uh -huh. he puts. He opens his pouch and he puts something back in. It's just so poignant to watch him be um, be such a oh, he, every every. It's like a walking blessing. <laughs> yeah, and th this reminds me in a way again of this new earth when we start coming back into harmony when we gift when we receive when we come back into that flow and when we start dancing again with nature and each other this is unity consciousness and this is new earth and it's interesting that the indigenous wherever they did have that yep. it is us who lost that sense of wonder if you take something leave something it's not about you have to pay for it. No, it's about the honoring of receiving. Yeah. And I I really love how you, you bring that story here because this is so important. We need to hear these voices. 
we need to start reading these signs again so we can come back into this amazing rhythms and harmony that we have forgotten. And mm. it's okay. I mean, we are taught not more than okay. I feel it's wonderful that you would invite and set the table for friends, for a partner that you are inviting into your life. And with in a way with the ceremony and ritual like he does and your grandmother would have whether you have the fancy tablecloth or whether you whatever have but yet with whatever you have you can make something special yes whether it's a special spiritual place place of set or whether it is a special stone it doesn't matter but I feel we have forgotten to create that wonder that keeps us in harmony, you know? And, and I feel it's very beautiful to being able to dialogue with you about that, really about how this heart that we have forgotten is yet so present and how this is creating for us new yes. earth. It's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and I want to. Yes. One, one, of the, one of the gifts. Yeah, it is a gift that that I I really want to share and gift people to draw out in others is. We can be this irrespective of current circumstances. And you know my my next book um is going to demonstrate that. Right, time after time after time. <laughs> um, you know, there's uh, I've got a PA, I tell people I have a PhD in adversity. Yeah. <laughs> <I've got others. laughs> yeah. um, and you know, I don't really laugh at all of it, but there's there's a there's a sense of wonder when you know, that happened and it's like, oh, my. And then, you know, at the height of everything, my ex left uh -huh. and in came joyology, a conversation with a magician. You know, what? <laughs> Who does that happen to? <laughs> and and this is this is really, I feel, the essence, you know, we... We need to remember that wonderment, now the wonderment comes in and wonder is always here. It's that presence that you had with that girl. That wonder is actually always here when we open our heart to experience it. So I will be looking forward to your book. And we can say that because you are also editing my beautiful stories that will yes. come out also in a book. So it is very beautiful when we have that wonder for each other, when we support each other, when we are part of each other's life, regardless, and that's what is important, of circumstances. So the worst mm -hmm. thing in your life could happen, but then another miracle, another wonder appears if you are able to see it. Yes. You could have missed joyology, you could yes. have missed the laughter and not the laughter in the adversities of yes. your life. You could have missed it. Mm -hmm. You could I have really missed did. the yeah. opportunity yeah. with the little girl. You could have missed it, you know. Yes. But you didn't. Mm. And this brings us to that beautiful point, regardless of circumstances. Mm. We are not the victims of our circumstances. We are not trapped. If we are open enough to be present and to see the wonder, anything can happen. Yes. Very beautiful to have this hard dialogue with you, Pat. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> wow. We will do this again, I'm very sure, but I'm, I feel for our visitors and viewers for today, I feel it's a good point to say, 
thank you for being here. Yes. It was much more than a pleasure, an honor, a delight to be with you today and to share that beautiful wisdom that you bring and how we can be in that presence of unity and that consciousness anytime, regardless of mm -hmm. any circumstances. So please, yeah. Pat, would you like to share with us a last beautiful, maybe even a little story to our audience so that they can take that wonder into their hearts? I think, um, going back to the tour with Pat, I was on day four, I, we were in a center that was looking after 500 children under five with cerebral palsy, orphans. Mm -hmm. So I walked past one room and Patch was in that room on the floor, nursing a little child crying, about two and a half, um, all little limbs, all, all uptight. And he said, come and commune with me, Pat. And he patted the floor beside him. So I went and sat beside him. Patch is six foot eight, really long arms. So he has this little poppet's head in his hands. Mm -hmm. And she's crying, distressed, little little limbs all tight. And he's rocking and he's humming. Or well, not humming, he's singing. And he's singing a medley of all the old Matt Munro, Dean Martin, all the crooning songs, right? It's just right. a medley, just made up. It's rubbish, but he's singing and rocking. And rocking. I'm just sitting beside him. And as he's doing that, this little poppet, starts to relax and I'm in wonder around that. He continues to sing and a few tears start to fall down his face and mine. He continues to rock and sing until she went totally limp in his arms and I've never seen that before. And by now he was sobbing and so was I mm -hmm. and he was sobbing so hard, snot was coming out his nose. And in that moment, I thought, I have never sat with a man who would show me this degree of vulnerability. And I saw then the, the true essence of who Patch is. Yes, how beautiful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I feel wonder is also in vulnerability, in the courage to step out of our comfort to step out of what we are maybe used to, to step out of the known that keeps us maybe in a prison and in suffering, to step out into this unknown space of wonder and being vulnerable and in this vulnerability coming into the most amazing place of joy. Yeah. Thank you, Pat, for being here today. And Thank you. I'm really looking forward to more, but I'm also looking forward to hear, of course, from our audience. Yes. How we could touch them today. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you.